the same my impression when I wrote this uh, in the time here. Actually, you know, uh, when I uh, reread the book after it becomes, uh, you know, published like this, you know, uh, it was, I was struck by my memory uh, several weeks ago when I teach my students and because I teach uh, introduction to social science and humanities. So <clears throat> I asked them to watch a very short or not very short, but short documentary movie. Uh, I, I think you are you all already watching it. The title is Social Dilemma. Uh, a story uh, regarding how the uh, people in the IT world, especially in the big or in giant uh, uh, social media uh, platforms like Google, YouTube, internet, and so on and so forth. You know, they all of them uh, talk and interviewed uh, regarding what they think about the impact of social media to the people and to the world. And, you know, uh, it was really interesting because then uh, when I read the book by uh, Guruji Anand Krishna, the same word also being enunciated by those interviewees, which is the world after the development of this algorithm is full of stress is full of despondency, is full of frustration, and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, in the end of the movie, one of the speaker or in the view is said that how to solve the problem because of this social media, and he just simply said, well, just delete all of them. <laughs> that is not the answer that I and my student want to learn or want to hear. You know, because uh, you you can imagine that those people are those students are all of from uh, people from the Z generation. Can you imagine they delete all of the things that they have? I don't think so. And that brings me when I read uh, Bhagavad Gita yesterday, today, and tomorrow. As soon as it was interesting, maybe I am uh, have misunderstanding or misinterpreting, but what uh guruji said is because the world right now is full of despondency uh, full of anxiety full of stress and so on and so forth the answer is not just deleting the whole goddamn thing you know so you need to answer with what he called buddhi and dharma buddhi is intelligent dharma is your commitment to uh, whatever that you need to, to do as human being. And that is to me, it's much, much more interesting than what the Google people have said about that. Because Guruji doesn't say that you guys, you should just sit down and delete the whole damn thing. But Guruji actually giving a very interesting solution. Face the problem and then try to use your intelligence and you know, committed with your dharma, and probably you can solve the problem, and probably you can also bring the social media not only as a, a problem, but also you can have a benefit from that. And that is what my reading in Bhagavad Gita that being interpreted by uh, Guruji, that the ancient book, the story, when it is... Um, uh, hermeneutically, you know, uh, contextualized with the modern society, or I would say postmodern society, actually is more than relevant. So, of course, Guruji doesn't say that uh, Bhagavad Gita and my interpretation of it will solve all the problem, but at least you know, you can manage the despondency, the stress uh, by doing some phenomenological approach. And that is what I see uh, uh, the trove or the treasure from the East to the West that they provide the way to think phenomenologically, not only objectively and rationally, uh, but 
you know, uh, because their phenomenological approach, their spirituality approach, then they sort of, you know, knowing how to solve the very intricate and sometimes very despondent uh, problem. So reading this book and comparing to the movie of Social Dilemma, I return to my class that on the one hand, the West and the enlightenment culture that we already learn and try to embrace it, uh, you know, uh, inherited the notion of objectivity that we, we know uh, things or knowledge from outside. But then again, from the East, especially from India and from the Hinduism and Buddhism and Eastern philosophy, they also contributed into the philosophy and the civilization by, by providing phenomenological approach. That actually consciousness and also your capability to understand from spiritual dimension can also become one of the sources to have a knowledge. And if you read the whole book, you know, not only uh, the, you know, the testament of this Bhagavad Gita story, but also the way Guruji uh, reinterpreted uh, using hermeneutics uh, style, I think it is a very, very relevant, not only from for today's world, but I hope and I expect it is also from the future, especially in Indonesia. I think Indonesia just entering the so-called revol industrial revolution 4.0 and also expecting to create what they call as society 5.0. But even though we are still in the very early stage of 4.0, but the problem is already here and in the future, I'm afraid I'm saying that if we are not prepared and we just give up to despondency or stressful thing or anxiety, then we are in trouble. Indonesia is very Binneka society, very multi, you know, cultural society. And if you cannot manage the plurality, then it's going to be a very, very difficult indeed. Yeah as uh, people uh, in Bali already become the witness, you know, because they are able to manage plurality so well, then probably in Indonesia, all of Indonesian people need to look at Bali, how they can manage, you know, uh, plurality from inside, from spirituality and another word from phenomenological approach. So that is the thing that I learned by comparing the Western heritage and Eastern heritage from the movie Social Dilemma and the book of Bhagavad Gita yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And I need to tell you the discussion with Guruji uh, later on. He will even more enrich us and because yeah, uh, if I am uh, explaining uh, the content of the book, it's like, you know, probably I just, you know, uh, saying nonsense because compared to uh, Guruji, I am nothing, you know, beyond nothing, probably. <laughs> not, not even nothing, beyond nothing. <laughs> okay, thank you very much uh, for having me here. Uh, and for Guruji, congratulations. I don't know for how many times I'll congratulate him. And uh, uh, to Ma Arjana, please uh, uh, protect him and the uh, ashram very well, because this ashram will, inshallah, become one of the jewels for Nusantara, for Indonesia, and also for our nation. Thank Amen. you very much. <laughs>